Hello Lizzie here of Lizzie Curtis Designs and this month I've got a gorgeous pattern for you and I'm actually wearing it. Yes it's Matilda, it's the apron. Let me just stand up and show you. I'm, you'll, you'll probably lose my head but there we are. So you can see it's a lovely lovely roomy roomy apron. It goes all the way back so it means that you you can actually if you're um, slightly larger proportions than me. Um, I'm an average size for a Brit about size 16 so if you're a little bit above that maybe up to size 20 or 20 to, it will still fit you easily if you are smaller than a size 16 14 then you you can adjust and in the pattern which is just here uh, I've uh, suggested what you can do to alter the size and of course you can go up as well so I've given you sort of a guidance if you like on what you would need to do to increase the size it's, it's really quite simple um, it's a great pattern I have now made at least four of these so I've got plenty Plenty, plenty of choices of what to wear when if I need an apron and quite honestly I do need an apron whether it's really for sewing it helps to keep the bits off you all the thread and fluff from the wadding um, and it saves the lint roller technique which I use pretty much every day to try and keep all the threads off me or when you're cooking and you get the splash of bits and bobs on your cooker it's great to keep yourself nice and neat and tidy so an apron is a great idea and Matilda and I know you can't see much of it there but Matilda is a great pattern now we've done something slightly different this month we've given you a star rating and for Matilda it's a two star and all that means is that it's not quite a beginner it's not aimed at a really really experienced uh, stitcher it's more your sort of average stitcher anybody can make this if you are a beginner I'm sure you'll be able to coat so don't be put off it's all straight lines uh, pretty much <laughs> we'll talk about it as we go through the video um, but uh, yeah and also we're now saying on the front of the page here the front cover whether you need a printer or not because um, on Matilda I actually have some applique now if you look at the little quilt behind me this is um, I'm going to try and say this right because we haven't rehearsed it a lot recently it's a Mashiko and Mashiko is a, a good size table runner or it could easily go on the back of a sofa it's um, I would say bigger than a lap quilt but it's a, it's a definite rectangle you're just about seeing it all there um, and I, you can see it's got the no lotus flower design I love that and I've incorporated that on the front of my apron and on the pockets as well today we'll just do the, the top half of the apron and then at a later date I can add lotus flowers or perhaps along the hem that would look lovely um, so this pattern behind me Mushiko which you know I'm gonna say different every time I say it um, I keep thinking of Sashiko so it's M Mashiko got it um, <laughs> It uses the lotus flower applique and actually I have a buttonhole stitch around that um, but with this one I've just literally used bond web heat and bond those sort of things invisible web to actually just stick it onto the apron and quite honestly it should be fine um, if you're worried about it when it goes through the wash then I would stitch around it um, but quite honestly it's an apron so by the end of the year I'll probably go in for recycling <laughs> so nothing else complicated about it to be honest it's got a couple of d-rings on this left hand side here um, and that means I can alter the strap which is fantastic which means you know if you perhaps if you're a full of busted lady you can make this bib um, a little bit bigger if you want to so you've got that adjustability likewise if you're a little bit smaller chested you can tighten it up so it sits nice and neat to the chest so lot, lots of alternatives and quite you know that's brilliant for a pattern to have all those different choices so uh, Matilda is the apron it's a great design it has been in the past um, on the on my YouTube channel uh, but I decided to update it and do a few little different twists to it um, and I hope you enjoy it so the first thing we do is we start off with a square of fabric obviously there's all the dimensions are in the pattern so if I bring that in 
and we can have a look at it I'll just move my machine slightly out of the way and I'm just going to try and do it so you can see straight away now um, this fabric I've got here is a, is a calico it's muslin in the US you can use whatever you like um, I prefer something cheap and cheerful like a calico because then it doesn't matter if you ruin it. However, you could use really brightly coloured fabrics to disguise any marks you might <laughs> you might get on it, because you know we will. So what I've done is I folded my fabric in half. So up here is the fold. If I put my hand just inside there, you'll see that that is the fold and that is directly on the top there. And then obviously we've got the raw edges down here, just about see it on the mat. Now the first thing you're going to do is I've given you the measurements but the first thing you're going to do is to measure up here from the fold so fold up to here that's your first measurement this one here you're then going to measure from that line across and it's a good idea to get a, a 12 inch or a 12 and a half inch ruler and just put let's get that the right way round there we go I never get these the right way around and use that to draw around here and to draw around here it's 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 really accurate and it's very handy and quick so you're basically going to measure from the fold to here and then you're going to measure from there to there and draw a line heat erasable pen obviously or water soluble something like that and then obviously you're going to draw that line from there to there and I've put a couple of pins in so my fabric stays put you're then going to measure and again I've given you the instructions in the pattern from that corner out which is you can see that line there and then you, with a pen, with a heat erasal pen again or even to be honest even a pencil would do you can then draw now in the pattern I've suggested you use your elbow elbow as your anchor point so put your elbow on your mat get your pen and get so far you'll find this curve is slightly different so you'll get to there okay and then you'll have to adjust and then you get to there okay now I trust me when I say to you that that is not difficult to do you need that measurement there but you need to draw that curve and um, that's the curve that goes under the arm that's your this is the front of the bib and this is the side that goes right almost round to your back um, uh, center back and this is the curve that goes under your arm so once we've done that and I'll have to stand up for this guys you get your rotary cutter or um, scissors because we've got the pins in so we know everything's going to stay put and just follow that curve round. Be brave. If you don't quite get the curve, I'm just going to twist so I can see I've just come off there so I'm going to just readjust. There we go. And if you, if you happen to go off the line, don't worry, crikey, it's a line that you've drawn so you're in charge. <laughs> And then you're just going to curve that piece out. By the time we've hemmed these bits, if you've got a piece that's a little bit chunky cut, I really wouldn't worry about it because by the time you've done the hems, it'll all be fine. So let's just take the pins out and we'll put the iron on just to get the heat to it. So we'll take the, um, the pen lines off and that's a spare bit. Now that's not quite big enough for the pockets unless you make um, a smaller pocket. I'll, I'll leave that for you to decide. But quite honestly, calico is such a great fabric for all sorts of things, you know, free motion embroidery and putting into a hoop and all, all sorts of things that won't go to waste. So <clears throat> I wouldn't uh, panic too much. So now that the iron is getting a little bit hot, we can take, now don't worry about my mat because I'm hardly putting any heat onto it. Just want to get rid of that, otherwise it's uh, op optically annoying. <laughs> so we'll turn the, the, turn the heat off now. So that has given us the shape we need for the front of our, our um, apron. Okay, we could, probably could do is straightening that up there, but I'll ignore it for the time being. It also gives us a lovely central point as well because we've got the fold there and that's great because it eventually we'll need that to help us line up the pockets. So while I've got that there, 
because now that starts to irritate me. I'm just going to square that up a bit. You don't really want that shape there. So there we are. Hardly a thing, but now I feel better about it. So that's the front of our apron completed. Obviously we've got lots of stitching to do yet, but we've got some preliminary things to do before we can carry on with that. The second thing we're going to do is to make a pocket. Now I have used a piece of A4 paper, you can use letter size, and you can make your pocket in exactly the same way. I'm not going to leave that there for you to see, but the, the um, all the patterns, like I said, all the pattern is in there. We've also got straps to make. I've already made the majority of them, but I've got the one with the D-rings to show you, so I'll pop that to one side as well. And I've already made one pocket ready to pop on the apron. So quite honestly, you know, so easy to do and probably easier than a double pocket and, a, and a, you know, like a full width pocket. Um, even with a machine line down the center, um, I think a nice shaped pocket, especially because it mimics the shape, you know, the side of the, the uh, apron here looks really stylish and then it's up to you if you want to do any more work to that because obviously on mine I've got my uh, lotus flowers applique in the corners here but you could add a trimming of lace or ribbon um, some sort of uh, pretty binding there's so many different things we can use now to pretty these things up um, it would look amazing and you will love wearing it a, a full apron is incredibly useful. So I think what we'll do first of all is to make up the pocket so you can see how that's done. Um, so you've got two pieces. I ask you to cut out two pieces for each pocket. Now again I'm using the calico obviously which is very very affordable. So if you're using really really pretty gorgeous fabric you might want to line it perhaps with calico and have your pretty pretty fabric on top. I'll let you decide what you want to do about that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch all the way around. So from this bottom edge here up around the curve, across the top and down. That's all we're doing, nothing on this bottom seam at all. So we'll bring in the machine and we'll do just that. Um, stitch length uh, 2.4. Um, I'm going to put my machine on a quarter inch because that's the seam allowance really, but I'll soon be taking it off, I can assure you. So I'm taking this up to 2.4, 2.5 have a look at your machine it's the default setting basically so let's get going so a little back <coughs> excuse me a little back stitch <coughs> excuse me just to secure that all the way up and then across And then around. Take your time if uh, you're doing this curve and you're not, uh, you know, confident perhaps with sewing curves. Uh, just give that one more stitch. And then back down. Okay, and then we'll just a couple of little back stitches just to secure. So you'll right sides together with this. So um, you've got the front, you've got the back, sorry, the front and you've got the lining and they're right sides together. So what we're going to do next is to trim off our corners. So we've, you've got three corners to trim and then we're going to cut in to our curve here. So if I do that uh, while we're still on that view um, and then I'll put it flat on the desk to show you how I trim into the curve. A couple of ways you can do this. So, I'm just going to get my little bits out of the way, they don't want to move. Okay, so there is our other pocket, nicely stitched now. 
um, so I've gone from there all the way around to there I've trimmed off my corners and we're going to trim into this now you could if you wanted to just snip into that if you want you don't only have to go from here to about here that would be fine but another way is to actually cut a little V out because if you think about it when this fabric folds back that's almost what it, what it will need to lay flat if you cut um, little um, just little snips into it the fabric will overlap um, inside not that it matters not that it matters so just cut you need a nice sharp pair of scissors there we go and that's probably enough to be honest just to just to sort of notch it that's what we call it and then all we're going to do is turn that right side out so just pop your hand inside just grab it pull it out and then get a nice implement of some sort a turning tool I've got a a nice knitting needle I use very pretty it's a size 8 if you're interested 8 millimeter it's very pretty so I quite like using it and it's got a blunt point it's not ferocious it's not going to go through my fabric unless I want it to so just poke out those corners and uh, there we go that's lovely just pull it down so you've got the raw edges sitting beautifully and then we need to iron it so it, it makes a lovely lovely um, sharp curve and sharp edges make sure that you push all those seams out and then once we've done that we're going to top stitch from this top here down to the side only so we're just going to top stitch that curve so I'll bring my mat in and we're just going to push this out so get get your hand in there and push that seam out and we're going to turn under this um, edge here these raw edges here so again you don't want to have it folded you want to try and make sure that's sitting that uh, the great thing about calico or muslin is that it it just it behaves beautifully <laughs> it, it presses beautifully it stitches beautifully oh my word it's the best fabric ever <laughs> it really is right so that's it beautifully pressed I now want to turn this hem under now um, I wouldn't bother going for a quarter inch that's quite a small hem really I would go for more like three eighths which doesn't sound like it's much different but it does make a difference and what I would do is I would start off where the seam is and fold that under give it a little squidge a little crease there go to the other side and crease and there's then just sort of pull that apart and that will give you that fold all the way along just pop it down on your mat again and just to make sure that they're all sitting you want them to sit on top of each other because we're going to top stitch it but you also don't really want to see the lining poking through that's it beautiful okay so that's folded under lovely so if we look at the one we made I'm just going to check it out I can't really tell but I think that's my top so that wants to be that side I, the only reason why I'm doing this is because when you top stitch your your eye is on this side you want this side to be perfect if the other side is perfect as well I also think that's a bit of a Brucey bonus um, but also you might get knotting from your threads because maybe you've got a lock stitch or, or back stitch and my machine always leaves me a little knot just to remind me where then it's there so I tend to go with that is definitely the top the front side so all I need to do is flip that one over so I've got a pair just make sure they they look okay I'm, I'm happy with that so now I'm going to top stitch this curved edge here to match that one there so let's do that I 
I'm going to put my stitch back to the middle again, my needle I should say. It's about a quarter inch in, but I don't want to be governed by that. And you just take your time and you might find reducing your stitch length, even though it's a top stitch, you might find reducing your stitch length to be your friend because you're stitching a curve. So that'll do. A couple of back stitches and cut the threads. Beautiful. So there's the other side. Okay. You can see that looks really lovely. I do love this fabric. Right, so now the next step is to actually place this on our apron. Now, obviously I'm not gonna get all of the apron in shot here, but I'll do the best I can. Now you're going to look at the right side of your fabric with this, doesn't matter. Um, to be honest, we, I'm going to use that center line um, as my guide. So let's just bring that in so you can see. Right, there we go, just nearly see all of it. Okay, so we want to, see where my hand is here, we want to be able to line up our pockets. Um, I'll give you the measurement from here down. Okay, so we've got a measurement to make. Now, because this is such a large piece of fabric, you could easily draw the line. Now, what I suggest you do is to fold it back in half again. Let me do it so you can see all of it. Fold it in half again and perhaps just draw a line across to the middle and then do the same on the other half. So do it in two stages. Um, the other way, because this is this is the sort of fabric it is, we can bring this over. And this is how easy this pattern is, okay? This is how it is. Beautiful. So do you see my folds are lining up? So this is my centre fold here. This is my centre fold here. And all I'm going to do is finger press. And that is my first line. So as long as you're just about there I'm happy with that then by finger pressing we've already got now that second line so if I bring that out you can see quite clearly where that line is now what we need to do is to draw the line for the pocket so let me just reach for my ruler and just make sure I've got the right side of this <laughs> And all you want to do is line that up. So obviously I'm using a very long ruler here, but a smaller ruler will do. And like I said, I'll give you the measurement so you're not to worry. And that's all I want to do. <laughs> Just a little line. You don't have to do a great big line. So if I bring that in so you can have a look, that's your line to put your pockets on. So what I will need you to do then is to work out about an inch, so inch and a half, maybe even two inches from your centre line. So there's your centre line there. So I would come out, I would say two inches, I think that's what I've put in the pattern, I'm pretty sure. So I would say measure out an inch either side of that and then that's where you're going to place your pockets. So it's as simple as that. And again, you're using the lines that you've created to help you place the pocket. There we go. So if you're not sure, pin it and then hang it up and see if you think that's all sitting correctly. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I can't see right over the top of it. I'm sure, well, I know you can. <laughs> Difficult for me. So we're just going to go with it. And I'm just placing pins at strategic points because I don't want this to wriggle. We don't want a wriggly pocket. So, can't use clips. So we have to pin. And it's good to have the pockets, I can assure you. Put your sweeties in. Oh no, you're mixing uh, Mixing implements, don't know what they are, Mix wooden spoons, I don't know. 
I think sweeties are a good idea. Right, so now we've got our pockets placed and that was easy peasy. If you're not sure what I did, just revisit that little bit of the video again. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch from this corner across, down to the bottom, across and up. We're obviously not going to stitch that, but it's good to say. And because we did a larger hem at the bottom of these pockets, a quarter inch seam allowance, if that's what you decide to do, will easily catch that turning gap there. So that's another reason why we do a nice um, big turning gap. I must admit, it looks a little wonky, but I'm happy. I'm happy. It's an apron. So we're just going to top stitch those on now. So let's bring the machine in. So once again we've got a stitch length of three and it's going to be about a quarter inch so when you start off I want you to start off just off the edge of the fabric um, a couple of stitches and then I want you to do a back stitch twice so you, it's lovely and strong because you know what you're going to put your hands in there and you're going to drag down you know you will you, you'll put them in there and you'll rest your arms so you want that to be really strong the same applies when you get back up to the top so let's go that's very secure So think of all the fabrics you could use for this. It says on the front of the pattern it takes a metre and a half, yard and a half would be fine. So not terribly expensive. And I'll tell you what else you could do, and I do, do actually say this in our, our tips and tricks, is to use an, a Victorian or an old tablecloth the ones that have been embroidered <laughs> that would be lovely wouldn't it I'm just thinking about how glorious that would look oh my gosh so just coming up to the top there okay let's make sure I hadn't cut my thumb I just caught it on the pin. Those pins are so sharp, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, so we're back up to the top of the pocket. So I'm going to re do my reverse stitch, my back stitch, come off the edge and then go back again, just to make sure it's totally secure. Okay, so that's done. Now I'll do the other size and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so now I've got the two pockets uh, neatly stitched on. You can just see them there. Could do with the press. Um, we can then move on to the straps. So let's pop this to one side. Now you've got two long straps, obviously, to go from the sides to the middle. And actually, they're long enough to bring round to the front again. That I like that. You, you may not, but obviously you could just tie them as normal. But they're long enough to do both, okay? Um, so we've got those so what you're doing there is um, the usual technique of uh, folding in half folding the longer edges to the center and folding again to give yourself a one inch strap and that's been top stitched all the way around except for the little raw edge at the, the um, ends um, and I talked to you about the other ends oh I think I've got those the wrong way around there we go uh, the other ends need to be folded over I've done the long strap for the neckline. We've got two different sizes for the neckline. So this is the long strap that's been done. And this goes on the right side. You, you may wish to change that round. It doesn't matter. Um, but obviously um, they are different lengths and they're meant to be. So if we look at the one on the overhead here, 
You can see how it's been created. The end has been folded over about a quarter inch and then it's folded so you have that beautiful strap there. And we're going to just top stitch that to make it super neat. So start at the raw edge. It um, doesn't matter too much whether you stitch the folded edge first or the double folded edge first, doesn't really matter. Um, if you fold the double folded edge, like I'm doing now, it means that you can get those two folds sitting directly on top of each other, where you might not do if you stitch the fold, the one fold edge first. It will make so much more sense when you come to do it. <laughs> Okay, we've just come to the end, we're just going to turn. Now if your fabric ends sort of poke out at the bottom here, at this side bit here, just get your pokey tool, your stiletto, and just poke them back in. You don't want that to be untidy. And then come up back up the other side. Lovely. So that's our shortest strap completed. <coughs> I'll show you there. Okay. So what we're going to do on the end that has the folded edge, so the end that's nice and neat, we're just going to get two D-rings. We're going to just slip those on. Okay, so you've got the flat edge obviously facing you like that. And then you're just going to fold that back. Now I want you to have a look at this. Do you see at the end of mine it's not as neat as I would like it to be? So what we can do is just turn that around and make sure that it's the neat... I've just done that again. <laughs> just make sure it's the neatest edge that's, uh, that's, that you can see basically. So there we are, that's better. So we're folding that back about an inch and then we're just going to top that stop top stitch that again <laughs> to secure those D-rings on. So be mindful of your, the, your machine, so be mindful of the foot of your machine. You don't want them anywhere near the D-rings. So nice big back stitch to start. I would go across the stitching I've already done. You don't have to. And I'm going back stitching all the way back. To where I started just to make sure that's secure. Don't have to do that but I like everything to be secure. It, it's such a pain isn't it if you start sewing something and then two or three months down the line it starts to all come undone because we just couldn't be bothered to backstitch. Well you know what it's really worth just spending that couple of seconds just to backstitch. So there we are so there's our D-rings attached to our shortest strap okay. So now it's a case of preparing our fabric, our, our apron, for the straps. So the first thing we need to do is to do our underarm seams and our hem, okay? So the process is the same for the underarm seams as it is for the hem. So I'll do one underarm and then I'll go away and do the rest of it. So this is our curve coming up to the top. So this is the top of our apron here and this goes under the arm and this is the side that goes towards our back so literally you're going to fold it once and fold it again around about a quarter inch but I really really wouldn't worry too much about that okay you've got plenty of fabric here it's a lovely big size apron and like I say if you're at all concerned if you're a smaller lady then I um, do advise you what you can do to make this a little bit smaller but for me I don't know about you I'm quite, I get quite messy at everything I do so actually having full coverage everywhere is absolutely ideal <laughs> Now, even though we've got a curve, because we're only doing a small hem, it's, I mean, it's not a rolled hem, but it's quite a small hem, it doesn't mind. You can see it, it's, it's quite amenable. If our hem was any bigger than that, half inch, for instance, we might struggle a little bit and we'd probably have to do a different technique. But as this is literally 
a small little hem. We can get away with all sorts. So we're just going up to that top edge, no more. There's always a reason why I say what I say. <laughs> so this is, um, and this is the picture actually that's in the pattern. Um, you, you don't need to give it a press, you can if you want to, but that is your curve um, underarm, yeah? So this is the top of the apron here. You can see if I bring it out a little bit. This is the top of the apron here. Do make sure that the pockets are on the right side and that is coming over to the wrong side there. <laughs> I just had this thought that maybe my pockets were going to be there, but they're not. Phew. Um, so you're going to just do that and then top stitch all the way around that. You're going to do the same on the other side. So I lift, if I lift that up to camera, you can see my curve pin there. And then all I'm going to do is this one on the opposite side. And then I'm going to do the bottom hem. So this lovely long bottom hem in exactly the same way. So I'll do the curve first and then I'll go away and do the other curve and the hem. And you can see what it looks like when I'm done. Because it's such quite a big piece, I'm limited to how much I can show you at any one time. This curve will be fine. If you're not uh, very confident, then turn it over once and stitch, and then turn it over again. You might find that easier. If you're using a heavier weight fabric, actually this is kind of designed for maybe like a heavyweight denim. You know, so if you want to make one for the other half, um, or or, you, or the the one, a man in your life who who would prefer to have a heavier fabric like a denim or a canvas, this is actually designed with that in mind, and you'll see why in just a minute. No need to back stitch. I do it out of habit. So <laughs> that seam is now stitched. So we've stitched that seam onto the wrong side. Obviously, I've top stitched. Um, so, so the top stitch is shown on the right side. Okay, does that make sense? So you're not seeing any of that hem on the right side. So that's looking beautiful. So I'll go away and do the other underarm seam and the long hem down the bottom there, I'll come back to you. So I have stitched around both armholes here, or underarm seams, not really armholes are they, the underarm seams, and I've also stitched that long hem as well. Now if you're a shorter lady and you think this might be too long for you, then obviously you can adjust the hem. If you're very tall, obviously you can adjust the hem as well, but I always think the more coverage the better, especially if it's anything to do with cooking or painting for instance, anything like that where you're going to get a little bit mucky perhaps. Great for workshops too, because obviously you can store your biscuits in the pocket there, not chocolate ones. Um, <laughs> so now's the time when we're going to put the straps on and then we're done. So easy. So um, all you've got to consider is where you want the D-ring strap to go. So this, this is the first one I want you to do. Now I like it so it's on the left. I like it so it, it goes here on the left. It doesn't matter whether it's left or right. It's just the habit I've got into. So if we look on the overhead, what we want to do is when it's completed, we want it so the right side is facing the right side of the fabric. So this is the right side of our strap there. And we want it to, so when we stitch it and we turn it over, it's gonna be on the right side. Um, and it's a good place to start just by bring it in, bring it, bringing it up here like this. Let's just turn it over. So you've got the wrong side facing you because then you know that when you turn it back, it's going to be on the right side. So let's just do that with that in mind. Okay, so, and I said to you a little bit earlier about uh, this has been designed so if you use thicker fabrics. 
Now, um, and also whether your machine can grab lots of layers, because what we want to do now is to bring our top edge of our pattern, our, our um, apron here, over the once like this. So let's fold it over once. Finger press it if you want to, or you could get the iron on it and just fold it over once. It's a, I'm, I'm probably going three eighths of an inch here. And then you want to line the raw edge of your um, strap to the raw edge of your apron top there. Okay, you can see if I get my finger out of the way, you can see that there is the raw edge of the strap and the raw edge of the apron. Now, you don't really want to go right up to the corner there. You, you might be really tempted to do that. Uh, two things. Firstly, your machine has got to cope with all the layers. Not necessarily now, but when you turn it again, it's got to cope with all the layers. And then we're going to flip it like that. If I can get hold that all at the same time. And then we're going to stitch here. And so it's got to be able to cope with all of that. Now, um, it will take a really heavy duty machine to go, even go through my calico. So I was thinking about maybe, as I said, denim or cat cotton canvas, something that's a heavier weight. So if we avoid that seam here and put the raw edges together here, and then we're going to turn it over again, and I'm going to get a clip this time. Okay, and we're going to top stitch all the way along here. Okay, now I can do the other one at the same time, my second shortest piece. So let's just move that over slightly. So it doesn't matter where, how we lay this one. This one is the right side facing us. So when we do it like this, it's um, the right side facing um, the outside of the apron, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So when I turn it round like that, we've got the right side <laughs> facing us. It's difficult to explain. But when you look at it like that, you've got the right side there, but this is all the wrong side. I'm not sure there's an easy way of saying that. Anyway, let's turn this over like we had it before, so we don't forget we finger pressed all that and I'm putting the raw edge of my strap up against the raw edge of my um, apron top there and I'm avoiding that side seam there. Okay, so this side seam here, I'm avoiding it and I'm just laying it up against it. If I hold it like that for a moment, perhaps you can see what that looks like. And then we're going to fold it again so it's lovely and beautifully neat. Okay, and then for this centre here, if you want to pop a pin in there, you can. I probably wouldn't normally bother otherwise, but there we are. So now you've got both straps installed. Once we've top stitched that, we're going to flip these over and we're just going to top stitch again, just the strap, just here, just so the strap sits like that. Okay, it'll all make sense. Now, on the sides... They are almost identical. So we're going to, if I can get it on the spot here, we're going to fold that in, finger press if you want, or run the iron over it, it's fine. So we folded it over here. You can, you can do a quarter inch, or eight, three eighths is probably easier for you. The raw edge of your strap goes against the hem just here. And then we fold that over again. And that encloses that raw edge of the strap beautifully. So we can pop a clip in just to hold it. And then of course you can pin the rest if you want to. Use your iron, just get it right on the edge there. So we're going to fold it again and then we're going to top stitch all the way down. And it's much easier to do it in those two stages than to do it all in one go. And if we go over to the other side, fold it in, give it a little finger press, bring our raw edges of our strap in, like so, and then fold it again. So that fold goes over the top of our 
apron strap so another clip clip is really good for this this part and then we'll just carry on folding this under and top stitching all the way down there to the hem and that makes a really nice neat finish and once that's done once again we'll fold that back over and top stitch just that inch a bit there inch and a quarter just to neaten off right so we'll, st we'll do um, we'll do this the side and then I'll do the top won't take long again nice little back stitch just to secure so don't forget you're going through all of the layers of the strap and the double layer of the fold over of the hem so we'll just go down this one side And then just neatly fold over at the end there where you've got that hem that you've already created little back stitch cut your threads so at the top here so let's just have a quick look on the overhead so on the top here where we've put the strap okay nice and secure all we're going to do is flip that over and we're going to top stitch oops get my hand out of the way we're going to top stitch close to the fold of the hem so it, it makes sure that our strap lies flat okay <clears throat> and we're going to do that with all of the straps So I'll just trim my threads there. So I'll hold it up to you there. You can see what that looks like. And then from the front, apart from my, I need to trim my threads, <laughs> it looks really neat. So I wouldn't go as far as this top bit here. You might be tempted, but um, unless you've got really sort of um, a good strong machine or fabric that's going to allow you to stitch all those layers, I would just stay on that little bit as I've done there and do it parallel with your your hem so the same applies to the top so we're just going to run along there so start a little way in and then go back you'll probably find that a lot easier than trying to start right on the edge try and keep that strap straight And of course you could decorate this apron with all sorts of things you can personalize it you can add lace and buttons and trim embroidery the world's your oyster so there are the two straps installed so now what we're going to do is flip these over and then we're going to catch those down as well just by stitching across here little back stitch just to secure all that straight across back stitch again flip this one over okay you see what that looks like and then top stitch again great so that's what our straps look like I expect I'll have to trim my threads but so that's what they look like from the front okay and our D rings looking beautiful just there 
I mean, to be honest, you don't. It doesn't matter whether you see that at the front or not. But it's nice if we can have it like that. And then, obviously, all you're going to do with your D-rings is push the strap through both rings, and then take it through just one ring and that will secure your strap and you, of course it's adjustable fully adjustable okay so let's quickly do the other side so this time I'm going to start from the, the bottom of the hem which keeps the bulk of my fabric on the left hand side which is how it should be really now you might want to at least press these uh, fold overs nicely or pin. I think it depends on, on you, on your confidence levels. Just think how many of these you could make for a craft fair. You have them hanging up. You could um, make them out of vintage sheeting blanket not blankets um sheet sheets duvet covers that would look amazing i'd come and visit your store because it doesn't matter where, what time of year it is there's always a craft fair and you can always start stocking up for So we've done that long side, so I'm just going to flip my strap over and top stitch. And all I'm doing is top stitching the, the inch and a bit of the strap. You want it secure though, like everything else. It's going to come under a lot of pressure. Okay, so that's the other strap beautifully installed. Lots of... Uh, threads to cut but I'll, I'll do all that later so the last thing is to put the applique on purely optional I just thought as we've got the uh, the mashiko little quilt there which is just gorgeous um, I thought it'd be nice to add it to our apron as well kind of got you've got a set now um, the quilt behind me actually fits on my dining room table beautifully um, so I'll probably use it for that and and you know um, have matching plates and all that sort of thing possibly um, but it, I thought it'd be nice if I was wearing my apron to have uh, a matching apron as well you, you might not want to go that far right I'll just trim my ends there so um, I've got uh, on the overhead there my um, apron top and I've still got my central crease which is rather handy because then we can apply our um, our applique. I'm just scratching the back of the bond web. It's not my favourite thing to do. I prefer not to scratch it away. Um, you've got outer petals, middle petals and the central bud. So you need to place these in the correct way. So the first two that I'm laying down are the outer petals. So try and get those lined up. So you want the, the middles to meet and these to be the right distance. In the um, court behind me, I actually give you a little template of the shape of this. So you get the same shape every time. It's quite useful. I think it probably wants to come down a bit. There we go. That paper always sticks to you, doesn't it? I'm just going to pop my iron on so we're ready. And so your middle petals, they go point to point there as well. And I'm going to bring that down to about there. Now I can't see exactly overhead, so I'm rather hoping it's sitting okay. But I'm lining up with my central crease. And then all I'm going to do is take my central bud. So the little, the sort of, if I put it down there, the, the squatter fat end goes on top like that. 
Now what I want to do is to bring these middle ones in because they're too spread out so they want to come up a bit. Those can stay there. So when I put this over the top, the, the fat end, it just covers the edge of my petals. Now if you wanted to, you could use a something like a stiletto just to adjust. My little dragon flies upside down, but I don't mind. Right, I'm happy with that. So now all we're going to do is apply the heat. And of course you can stitch this on if you want to, or you can just leave as is. Depends on time and inclination. But as long as you give it a good press, keep moving it around so it doesn't scorch your fabric. There we are, we've applied our lotus flower, which is just looking utterly gorgeous, totally utterly gorgeous. So there we are, we've made our second Matilda. I am now the proud owner of four Matildas. <laughs> but you know, one in the ironing, one in the wash. Did I say ironing? One in the ironing, one in the wash, two hanging up in the kitchen. One for me, one for John. So there we are. And obviously you could put your applique on the pockets as well. But I think it, look, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Let me just stand up again so you can get a look. You're gonna cut my head off now. <laughs> and there we are. So there's my two lovely big pockets with my flowers on. This obviously, like I say, comes all the way around. You don't have to do it like that. Obviously it's a little crease now because I've been sitting down. And you can pull it really tight or you can have it loose. You can even fold it. Sometimes I will do that, to be honest. I fold it, so I've got a crease there. Take the straps around, adjust, <laughs> and just tie. Absolutely fab. And I feel very secure in it. It's great. And the fabric goes way around to the back. So I'm fully protected, I'd like to think. <laughs> so that's Matilda. That is our new pattern for March 2023. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Please go to my website and buy the pattern. I would very much appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing lots of Matildas. Bye.